Hello and welcome to the show. Now there was a time when this hill climb monster series was ruled by the Italians, the Lancia Stratos and the Lamborghini Countach were one and two on our leaderboard. However, times have rather changed. Those two are still in the top ten. Uh, still very, very quick times. They're currently sixth and seventh. Uh, not that far off the leaders. No, it is all very close here. However, yeah, the Italian cars have slumped down the table a little bit. And today, we are potentially going to try and change it with our first Alfa Romeo to tackle this course. And it's certainly quite a spectacular one. This is the TZ2. Now, it stands a chance of going very quick. I know how amazingly fast this car can be. Certainly on fours or six in some of the lower classes, it's absurdly fast. Uh, I think I have a C-class one that's very, very quick indeed. Tend not to run it because it's a little bit OP. But um, yeah, these things can be very quick. It is absurdly light as well from standard, but... I don't know how much power we're going to get into it uh, because, yeah, it may pick up PI points very, very quickly on Horizon 3. It starts off as a uh, mid-ish C-class car, but I do suspect it's not going to stay there very long. Right, so we're going to start off with a drivetrain swap. Of course, we're going to have to have the vehicles as all-wheel drive. We are then going to put it on some snow tyres that are likely to jump the PI all the way up into A-class. Uh, kind of fairly common for vehicles in this in this series. Now, what are we going to get tyre width-wise? Two four fives at the front. Not too bad. And we're going to get two eight fives at the rear. Yeah, considering the car weighs one and a half thousand pounds... It's not too bad at all. Uh, for for tyre size, we are going to want Forza Aero. As much as I don't really want to uh, ruin the looks of a beautiful classic Alfa Romeo, I want Forza Aero on the car. It does give you uh, advantage in terms of speed for next to no PI. So we're going to be having it. Uh, we do want some nice race brakes. So we are going to want some off-road suspension. Likewise, we are going to want race anti-roll bars and we're going to want the roll cage. Uh, the cars, cars like, well, to be fair, I'll put a roll cage on just about everything. It gives you that little bit extra chassis or rigidity is always a good idea to uh, to have, have that running. It makes it slightly heavier, but I mean, there's no weight to this car anyway. Now, engine-wise, uh, what on earth are we going to do with this? Um, I don't know. I don't know how much power the standard engine can get. Uh, before we start messing around, shall we just have a look what our options are? Okay, Turbo Rally 3.2 i6 will fit in and will stay within PI. Okay. Now, they are both heavier options. Uh, and I, pro I wouldn't go for the Turbo Rally engine. I'm kind of disappointed there's not a big V8 that can go in this. I feel like one of the V8s should go in this. And uh, that would be quite good fun to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to have in here. I'm not sure the standard engine is going to get a huge amount of power, is it? Um, it's not going to be enough to get it to the top of S1 class. Okay. Well, this is good news for the Alpha in terms of being very quick, because we are going to have to go for the 3.2. Now, this is, again, this isn't the greatest engine, I'm going to be honest. Uh, however... It is going to be a damn sight more powerful. It is a little bit heavier, yes. I think we can probably get some weight out with uh, the likes of the exhaust. Um, yeah, we're going to have a huge power to weight ratio. Considering we've had cars run up here with about four or five hundred horsepower that have weighed kind of two and a half thousand pounds, that's this is a big power to weight ratio we've got going on in this car. And that could make it very fast. It's got decent sized tyres. I know how good the chassis is. I know how good handling this car is to begin with. So there is... I mean, bloody hell, this is getting a lot of power. Not a huge amount of torque, but that's just the... Uh, yeah, that's what you get with this i6. That's a lot of power going on in this, uh, in this car. Well, I... Yeah, this could... Could just maybe give that BMW something to worry about. It's a big maybe. Uh, we'll just go through and see if any of this will uh, will get the diff, of course. Sometimes you can sneak these sort of bits on without it uh, changing the PI. Uh, now, it says that the you know that's uh, a big improvement in speed. The gearbox that it comes with may have short gear ratios. It's not going to matter. The course we're driving around, you're not going to go more than 130 anyway. Even the fastest cars don't. So, yeah, we don't have a problem with it uh, buzzing the limiter. None of those parts will get on the vehicle well. The Alfa Romeo is ready to go, and I think stands a very good chance of uh, restoring some Italian glory to our leaderboard. 
So, we are here at the Devil's Corners Hill Climb with our car. I'm going to get three runs up the course to try and go as fast as possible. Now, the current leader, the BMW 507, has a time 155.9. That is a second faster than anybody else up this course. It is a mighty, mighty quick car. This Alfa Romeo would have to be something seriously special to go faster than that, but it might just be doable. A low 57 is where the other Italian cars stand, and you know, a, a generally a low 57 is good going up this course. So if we can aim for around that area and then see what else might uh, might come. We're struggling a little bit with understeer early on or with, uh, with this vehicle. It certainly does seem... Uh, eager to pull itself up the hill very, very quickly. We've definitely got plenty of acceleration in this car. Ooh, that's a little too eager in some places. But you will with a power-to-weight ratio as uh, ludicrous as this one. Oh, God. Ooh, careful now. <laughs> it's, just, it's just bonkers. How fast will it go down this straight? The fastest we've seen is about 130 miles an hour. It's in all sorts of wrong gears. 123 uh, out of the car. It wasn't the best of runs in all honesty there. But never mind. We're going to skirt out towards the wall. 107 miles an hour across the jump. Now the downside with the uh, TZ2 is the front end is very, very low on this one. And the splitter doesn't help matters. The splitter is kind of... Uh, it's sort of quite sticky out downwards, and I do fear that the front end of this may get caught on the landing of some jumps, although so far we have been doing okay. Oh, there's so much understeer going on in this that I wasn't particularly expecting from the car. We've also got it caught on the ice. Oh, it's all going all gonna to go a little bit wrong down there. Yeah, that didn't work out uh, particularly well for the poor Alfa Romeo. Are we going to... Oh, we're going to crack the windscreen and uh, do a little bit of a wheelie. That's not so good for the poor car. Thankfully, only got a couple more corners to have to worry about. I mean, that goes to show you the uh, crashing about going on with the front of the car. Yeah, not a good first, not a good first run particularly. Um, two minute point five. Definitely plenty of places to improve. I, I, I think the BMW might be safe at the top though. I think we've got a bit too much understeer in this car for it to really, uh, really go that quickly. We will have to wait and see though. So as we head on to our second run, I think I need to uh, do a little bit better job of dealing with the understeer. Gear ratios are very, very short indeed on this car. 125 miles an hour before jumping on the brakes there. Yeah, incredibly fast accelerating. It's, uh, it also sounds incredibly eager, more so than a lot of cars uh, in, in, in some ways. I think it's the short gear ratios that are helping it sound and feel very, very eager to accelerate out of these corners. Uh, quite good fun, though. I think third gear is probably going to be the gear of choice out of a lot of these turns. Second is just too short. It's just buzzing the limiter constantly. Uh, and there we go, out of the next turn. Yeah, I'm liking it. I'm liking it as a car to drive up here. It is a shame, though, that we're struggling so much to get the front end turned. It's, yeah. I mean, yeah, we've got we've got bigger tyres at the back than we have at the front. It's a fair difference, but certainly not the uh, the biggest difference we've seen. Hell, the Kuntash had absurd differences, and that was still very, very fast indeed. Come on, Alfa Romeo, get some speed up across here. 107 again. Not quite as quick as that BMW, or as quick as the Pacer. And uh, that, that, that's an almost criminal thing to say, that uh, an AMC Pacer is faster than an Alfa Romeo TZ2. Sadly, it is also the case, and I've got it all sorts of wonky. That's my bad. Across the jump, we were all mispositioned, and uh, that's not good for the hairpin. Yeah, third gear is definitely the one to, uh, the one to be in. Now, I am going to have to have a little bit of a... A kind of a break. I think I might have got... Oh, we just brushed the uh, thing on the way past. I thought I might have missed that checkpoint. Uh, oh, God. Please turn in. Please turn in. Please turn in. Find some grip. Find some acceleration out the other side. There we go, Alpha. Uh, oh, then there goes the windscreen once more. Yeah, that's not a... Uh not a nice jump particularly for this car. I think we are on for a... Uh, oh, we were on for a good lap time. Oh, we got a... Tw we got some oversteer and fighting to correct it. Almost ended up firing my car into the wall. 
57-3 from the Alfa Romeo. Not quite as fast as the Countach, but uh, it's less than half a tenth away. Yeah, I think a 56 is possible. I think a 56 with a very, very clean, clean and, and perfect run is doable with this car. Well, the Pacers' reign in second place may not be particularly long-lived. Certainly not if this Alfa Romeo has uh, any say in it. As much as I liked having a Pacer in second, just for the pure amusement, I would be uh, I would be quite happy to see this Alfa Romeo take that uh, spot away. To be fair, I did think that this would stand a serious chance of going near that BMW, and it's still quite a long way off. Now, admittedly, we might be able to find some time on this final run. I managed to change camera by accident. Uh, yeah, we might be able to find some time on this final run. I think there is a little bit in it, but I don't think there's anywhere near enough to get near that 507. It is just such a quick car. That BMW is just so perfectly suited in many ways to this course that, uh, yeah, that is looking like a really, really tough benchmark to beat. The Alfa Romeo's got the acceleration and it's got it's got the quarter grip, it's got the traction to do it, but it doesn't have the turning. There's just, all of the cars that have gone, that have challenged the BMW have been as good as it in one, maybe two areas, and then there's a third one that they just can't do. And for the Alfa Romeo, it is the turning. It just can't get the front end turned in with the same speed as the BMW. Although we are actually going very, very quickly on this run if we don't do that. Okay, we're a little bit skew if on our way into the hair, but we have got away with it. This run here is actually going considerably better. I fear this is where I think we're always going to end up losing out time to some of the other cars because I can't get it through there with the speed that I really want it to. But we are looking quick here with the TZ2. Maybe everything that I've just said is complete and utter nonsense if we can finish off this run. Oh, we haven't even cracked the windscreen across the jump. Get the car under control as we come into the final, final corner. I can't get on the power. We're just going to let it slide this time rather than try to correct it. Oh, not quite. Not quite. But bloody close. Bloody close indeed. It's actually not quite so settled down the icy straight is where we just fell back a little bit and the landing of the big jump uh, we saw the car got thrown around we didn't lose the windscreen that time but uh, I think that's where it might have just lost it on the BMW I am I'm surprised that we got it that quick I'm glad to see the TZ2 a first real serious challenger to that 507 the 156 one will put the Alpha into second place we do once more have an Italian car at uh, the top of, or towards the top of the table, it's just two tenths down on that BMW. Not quite enough in it, though. Uh, yeah, I, I'm slightly surprised to have found so much time. I uh, dealt with the understeer a bit better on that run, was able to carry some more quarter speed. It is not as nice to drive, I don't think, in some regards, as that 507. It does have traction, does have phenomenal acceleration, but the understeer uh, is... A bit difficult to deal with, and this is coming from me who likes understeery cars in general. So, yeah, it's uh, not the easiest one to drive. I think what ultimately might have cost it that couple of tenths is, well, it's a very, very low-slung classic race car. And some of the bumps and the landings of the jumps weren't particularly kind to it. I said at the start I was concerned the likes of the front bumper, the front splitter, and so on might get caught on the ground. And that landing coming up towards the second to last corner was very awkward. There's not much I can do once the car's, well, the car's in the air. I've got nothing I can do with it. And it is a rough landing zone. We've seen cars doing wheelies down there with the Pontiac. And we haven't quite got the control, perhaps, with the Alfa Romeo. It was a little bit fighting there and down the icy straight as well. However, second place is nevertheless a fantastic result. And yeah, the first real challenger to that 507. The Pacer moves down to third, but it is still, you know, still on the podium for the moment, which is <laughs> not bad going at all. That, though, is going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.